Are you going to say hi to me? What the heck is this? Go. Jerk. Boy, if only the dog could talk. Bet that pooch has some good stuff on Chantel. Thank you Grub Gang, for your continued financial support for this channel, and also for supporting the entire Note Again family, it is greatly appreciated. When you get a chance, let us know in the comment section below what you think of our revisited reaction. There will be a link to the original video in the description, so you have something to compare it against. I just wanted to I show can't you see your pants. I need to show my pants. You can't see your pants. Can you go back now? Oh my gosh, no. Can you see my pants? Okay, you're not gonna pick. Can you see my pants? Here's Foodie Beauty, oh, all see? dressed up in her pants and shirt. These are the pant pants I want to show you guys. They're thicker material leggings from Pennington's. Dot com and this is the shirt. I like it because it covers everything. And yeah, so this is It's like an ad for a fucking weight loss center. Before and way before. <laughs> this guy ever stop breaking balls. This is the side and this is the back of the shirt. And that's it. Question for mom and all of Chantel's followers and the people that love her. Do you really love her, or do you agree with her because you don't want to be accused of fat shaming, or body shaming? Mom, how can you look at that child of yours, and support the destruction she is doing to her body? Have any of you, especially Mom, dished out tough love and told Chantelle enough is enough? That continuing down this road much longer will not have a good ending. Didn't think so. One more thing Chantelle. What do you really feel when you look at yourself in the mirror? If you think you're a beauty stop lying to yourself. Do you really think any man that isn't a feeder, looks at you and says to himself, damn, I got to have her for myself. Hey guys, hey. Hey guys, hey. How are you? How are you? I really don't want to make this video. I really don't. But it needs to be done despite the backlash I'm going to get, no doubt. You don't want to make it, because you know you'll be right back at it, grubbing away. Um... I don't mind. I just ask if you could please keep it respectful. That would be greatly appreciated. There's the problem. You only want respectful comments, kind, loving comments. You delete the bad stuff because you know it's the truth. I, as you can tell, probably, obviously, guessed by the title of this video, um, I've decided, again, to not do mukbangs on my channel. Bullshit. Um, I've decided not only to not do mukbangs, but to, in general, not make food a theme on this channel. Come on, don't bullshit me. Especially not one that involves indulging in food, indulging in trigger foods, and I've done this many times before on my channel, so those of you who are not new to the circus know what, um, probably guess that this would happen. You are a creature of habit, you will continue doing this because no one has the balls to tell you that you are full of shit. Or predicted that this would happen just based on the patterns I have, um, demonstrated on my channel, so I don't blame you there. But there's a few things, other realizations that I've come to that have been, that are the nails in the mukbang coffin for my channel. And a bit of the history, maybe for those of you who are new, I do have some new subscribers. Uh, I started my channel back in 2017 and I did a few makeup videos and then hopped on the mukbang trend and grew my channel that way. Um, I didn't really, I always struggled with food. I always had issues with food, but I never realized how much of a food addict I was, how much I had disordered eating. I never realized that. 
at the time. Um, it took a few years after starting mukbangs to really unravel what's going on, start to unravel what's going on, and I'm still very much right in the throes of everything, of the disease, and... You would not be in this situation if you listened to the doctors. Instead, the money is your master, you put the money before your health. Yes, because of that, I don't think it is healthy for me to be obsessed with food on my channel. Because for me, to beat this, for me the only way as a severe food addict is to keep things clean and simple when it comes to eating and abstinent. There won't be any clean food or eating healthy. It won't be long before you start adding little sides to your healthy change. And the very act of mukbanging, I've tried. I've tried to make it healthy. I've tried to turn a blind eye, which is not good, but I've tried to make healthy mukbangs. And I still find myself, it is a slippery slope, but I know a lot of you have said that, but I'm, very, I'm stubborn and I don't listen to people. And that is, um, that is a very negative trait to have. What a joke. Don't listen to others, you think admitting that will make you change. You are your own worst enemy, and after this video, you will start sabotaging yourself. And, sorry, I had to go do something and I don't really remember what I was talking about. Um, basically, just the, the, the short of it is, as a food addict, it's a slippery slope for me to um, say I'm going to do healthy mukbangs and then I find myself wanting to be more entertaining in the mukbang way. You know, you see Nick Akato, you see Steven Sushi, you see other large, bigger mukbangers who have more success in that community and they actually um, do a really big display of food. And I find myself leaning towards that when I do mukbangs, um, like with the five tacos and the two burgers or whatever. And I find ways to justify it with trying intermittent fasting and all this and that. And it's just, um, it's just not, not healthy eating that kind of food, period. I, that food just when I eat it, no matter how long I intermittent fast, um, no matter how healthy I eat after, I'm finding that I still feel like crap. I still feel the effects of, you know, if I eat some, a really fatty meal, really unhealthy meal, uh, my heart beats faster, um, I need to lay down, it's just horrible feeling and I just want to keep it simple when it comes to food and I want to invest the money I save on mukbangs, on food, which I spend a ton of money on food. Like, I don't have money for anything else because I spend it on food. And that, you know, I could use that money to do more fulfilling things on my channel. Which brings me to another nail in the mukbang coffin. I don't feel fulfillment. Overall, when I really analyze how I'm feeling after a mukbang, I feel like I do after I have a binge. I feel not right deep down because I know deep down what I'm doing is not right. And I just choose to ignore that just so that I can it's easier to do that than to do other content and be held accountable you know all right after this self-analysis we can't take any more we're just going to cut ahead to the next very important news <laughs> no. I was having shortness of breath a new cough a dry cough and when I would cough I would taste blood and I had chest pain. So when because I've had pulmonary embolism before, I've had blood clots in my lungs before, I don't mess around and I was told to see a doctor. So I went to a walk-in clinic to avoid the ER. But they always send me to the ER <laughs> with a note. I, I spent three hours waiting at this clinic only to get sent to the ER with a note to have more blood clots ruled out. So the, the notes seemed to fast track me because right away they put an IV in so they could draw blood or whatever. Um, all of some vitals measured or whatever. Everything was fine. Um, 
I had an EKG done, that was fine. I had a chest x-ray done. Now, I was sent home under the, you know, assumption or whatever from the doctor that the diagnosis or whatever that I, I might have something viral. I was put on droplets precaution too because this was right when the whole coronavirus thing was starting. So, um, I get home two days later and the reason I went to the clinic in the first place was because I, I thought I had a cold and I wanted a puffer to help me breathe. Like salbutamol or whatever. I get home two days later, this quality assurance or whatever quality something department from the ER. Apparently when you leave the ER, you have tests done. There's a doctor and a nurse who look at your test results again and uh, make sure nothing was missed. Well, um, apparently on my chest x-ray there was something that was there and I wrote it down because the, the terminology now if any of you work in the medical field and know what this is I um, so it says Hilar it's called Hilar H-I-L-A-R lymphadenopathy so there's an increase in the right Harry Hiller with ill-defined opacity which could result from atelectasis or air disease. But so basically they want me to have a non-emergent CT scan. I know you look grumpy that I'm not paying attention to you. I'm trying to film a video. Because so they, they told me to have uh, my family doctor order a CT for me. Non-emergency -em one just whenever, you know, because back in November, August and then November, I had a chest CT done and they found um, a nodule or an enlarged lymph node in my lung or whatever. And it's grown a little bit. That's basically what, I, what the guy said who called me the nurse and they want to um, give me a CT. So I did end up luckily getting a family doctor within that time and I have an appointment Monday and I have to talk to them about ordering a CT for me um, I asked the doctor you know basically why what does this all this mean why a CT and they're kind of like blunt and grumpy like not grumpy but like very blunt but basically they want to rule out cancer but we hope it's not cancer either but don't you think all your health issues could have been avoided if you weren't eating like you do and carrying so much weight. Um, it could be so many other things. Apparently it could be from an infection or I don't know. The fact that it's not an urgent request for a CT uh, makes me think it could be something else. I don't know. Um, I'm trying not to worry too much about it until I get more answers. And yeah, so that's that's how my health is health is doing um I'll, in another video i'll go into more about how i'm you know how i'm doing with the post hysterectomy healing and everything like that uh, i definitely will not be going back to my things i don't feel right about it um i feel better when i'm just being real and open with you guys and sharing my struggles, sharing my life. And um, I think a lot of people just want me to be honest with myself, honest with you guys. And that will be short lived. And the reason for that is your love of money. Once the ad revenue drops, you'll be right back to the large mukbangs because that's where the money's at. Continue to work on getting to a happy, healthier place. A lot of you have been um, watching me for about three years and that's a, a long time <laughs> that I've been with you guys so I understand if a lot of you do come from a place of concern and um, you know I'm, I'm very sorry if I've been very you know deaf blind to it all um, I just really when I have my mind set on something I just kind of want to tune out any opposing opinion and that is something I really want to work on so I'm gonna try my hardest to allow opinions of all forms in my comment section um, 
we'll believe it when we see it. However, future Chantel had a lot to say on the subject of comments. I don't need your comments uh, saying, here we go again. I don't need illness shaming, cycle shaming. I don't need your, your, your ne negative comments. I don't care about them. They're not wanted here. So please go elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and share. Take care and we will see you all in the comments.